Folks, thanks for joining us today. My name is John Dubas with Premier Marketing, and we'll be spending the next 50 to 60 minutes or so discussing the planning process for the upcoming annual election period and all of the time in between and thereafter, if we can jam that all into a little less than an hour. Um, today's presentation is being recorded, and it, the link to that recording and um, other information that we'll reference through the course of the presentation will be sent to all who have expressed interest in today's presentation. It will also be posted on our website at premiersmi.com and on our YouTube channel as well. So watch for it there. That usually comes a few minutes before I'm able to kick out some of the follow-up. So watch for that there. A bit of housekeeping. You'll note in the software package, you have a section for both chat and questions. We normally cover a lot of the questions through the course of the presentation, but I'd ask that you put your questions in the questions uh, portion of the software. That makes a little bit of sense. And we'll make certain that we address any inquiries that you have at uh, through the course of the presentation. And if there's something I can't answer for you, we'll make certain that goes out to all as part of the follow-up. Um, what we'll start with is a little bit of level set about Premier Marketing. We have a mix of uh, attendees on today's presentation that may not be as familiar with us as some others. We are a national marketing organization founded in 1968. That's part of the Integrity Marketing Platform with offices across the country. We act as an insurance wholesaler working through independent insurance agents and agencies such as yourself. And the contracts available for the different programs that are available through our organization are at the highest possible commission levels with recruiting contracts available to those who qualify. We approach the market on a large base of product, the base programs for Medicare, the Medicare Advantage and Medicare Supplement Plans, and the Part D prescription drug programs are a big part of our portfolio. But as are the, the life insurance and annuity products, final expense life insurance plans, pre-need programs, long and short-term care programs, disability income, and those ancillary benefits that are crucial for a number of different reasons for the population we serve in the areas of dental vision hearing, critical illness cancer plans, hospital indemnity programs, accident plans, and we've even introduced a telehealth program, MD Live, a couple of months ago. When you look at the Medicare Advantage programs, you have a full portfolio of products, the national carriers and many of the strong regionals there are available to you through our organization. And that same philosophy carries over into the standalone prescription drug programs. In many cases, that's part of the same MA contract um, that you would have. When we speak of Medicare supplements, you have a very broad portfolio of products and specific marketing programs to help support that area. And when we speak of the ancillary products in each of those categories, the national leaders are there for you through our organization and make a great way to not only serve the needs of our prospects and clients, but create an additional revenue stream and use multiple products to grow and strengthen the uh, persistency of the programs that we have in place in uh, the households. When we speak of the Medicare marketing opportunity, a lot of this is probably review for those of you who have been in the uh, area that we're pursuing here in the Medicare world. And when you speak of the Medicare population, you hear of the silver tsunami, the aging of the baby boomers, one every 10 seconds turning 65, uh, 10,000 plus a day. But if you're looking at the market based just on age, it's a little different than that because we're seeing a number of people work past the age of 65 or for one reason or another decide not to access their Medicare benefits until later on, uh, but that's more than offset by this category. You got 15% of the Medicare population that is under the age of 65 accessing the Medicare benefits through disability. And that gives us then an idea of the breadth of products that we need available because the population's challenged in many different ways. Two thirds of the population have three plus chronic conditions and you have some challenges with income and assets as well. So helping people with whatever choice they have is a key component on how we plan for our marketing activity now and into AEP 
and some of the different programs that we want to involve ourselves in based on personal preference for whatever reason it may be. But these folks, they don't have to do anything. They can even decline the optional part B if they choose to do so. Most don't, thankfully. But some will self-insure for the medical portion of those expenses and pick up a Part D program. Some don't even do that. But that Part D program would help them out with the prescription drug coverage. A good portion of the folks will take out a modernized, standardized Medicare supplement plan and a Part D program. And then others will bundle the packages through the Medicare Advantage programs, the Part C programs. And we want to make certain that if we are looking at the Medicare population as a whole, we're planning for each of the choices that the folks have available to them. And what we're seeing on some of the information uh, compiled by Deaf Research, that people as they first come into Medicare, the initial Medicare enrollment, that includes the T65s, the late to Medicare seniors, the people that are accessing uh, coverage because of disability, we're seeing a fairly even split between Medicare Advantage and MedSup plans. And then there's that portion that says Medicare, original Medicare only. That includes the dual beneficiaries, the folks with Medicare and Medicaid. It may include the folks that are accessing care through the VA. It includes the folks that are accessing benefits through retirement from the company they used to work with. And you do have the portion that of the folks that are on original Medicare and self-insuring for a whole bunch of stuff. So we wanna make certain that we can help them. And part of that is being able to speak the language. There's a ton of acronyms out there. One of the things you'll see in the follow-up is a link to this guide to help you translate some of those acronyms. Um, I've been in the Medicare market for ooh, 35 plus years, and those initials still pop up every now and then. I gotta go, ooh. M-I-C-K-E-Y-M-O-U-S-E, wasn't there a television show where they sang that? Oh, that's a different acronym in a manner of speaking. We wanna make certain that we can help translate some of the information that they're receiving. And we're all pretty aware of the different standardized election periods if you've been in this space for any time period at all. For 2021, we're through each of these standardized uh, open enrollments. Today's topic has us planning for October 15th and December 7th during the annual election period, the AEP. And we'll see that a lot of that activity is predicated by what we're doing now. And we'll go through that in greater detail. We do have the opportunity since we're approaching July, we're here at the end of June, where, hey, we still have bills to pay toward the end of the year. Folks, you can't even discuss 2022 benefits until October anyway. We wanna make certain that any of these special election periods, and there's a ton of them, that we're able to help people who may be eligible for one of these get out of jail free cards, special election period sets. And we see that there are additional special election periods brought about by weather circumstances, civil unrest, a whole bunch of different things that are out there. We've even seen the weather SEP for the sovereign state of Texas that's extended through September. So you see a little back and forth as to uh, additional information that's available there, you will get an updated listing of this as part of the follow-up as well. And it's important for us to keep that in mind because a lot of our discovery now helps us determine what will be key components within our plan moving forward. Because well, Kaiser Family Foundation tells us that the majority of people on Medicare aren't reviewing or comparing their coverages annually, that's where we need to step in and help them do so because a lot of the more vulnerable portions of the population, they're having some challenges with it particularly, and those are the folks that we really need to help. Even those that are looking at some of the information, they're having some challenges understanding the program, and our translation of the ABCs of Medicare can really help them with solid information so they can make choices on plans that make their life as easy as possible because they're not even using plan finder uh, we have different software packages that compare to that that can help you in this regard as well but the dependable medicare.gov plan finder well you, we've seen over the last couple two three years since they changed vendors that power that there's been some challenges there so we want to make certain that we're able to deliver strong information, accurate information, because, hey, 
the simplified version that government puts out there, the truncated version where, hey, this video is three and a half minutes long, put out in 2015, so we're talking nearly six years ago, and consider the size of the Medicare population and you only have less than 800,000 people that are looking at this very concise presentation. So our role as an independent agent offering coverage through multiple carriers and the choices, helping them understand the choices they have in their market can be very, very valuable for them. And we've got to be prepared to deliver that information now and into the future on either a face-to-face -face opportunity, which some people still want, or a virtual presentation, which many of us have been coming have become accustomed to over the last year and a half or so, even though we are in an industry that uh, allowed us to do face-to-face -face through the entire time. You had, of course, great reluctance for the folks to do that, even though the population at large has been trained to accept information in this manner. I have visited a doctor 10 times in the last year, one particular specialist, and it wasn't until the appointment last week, the 10th one, where I actually saw them face to face. So we're having the providers of the care for the programs that we're offering, delivering it virtually. And many of the folks prefer that and are very comfortable with that and will continue some of that activity moving forward. But it goes beyond the doctors and the specialists, even though specialists are doctors. Hospitals are doing some of the, the pre-work. Uh, dentists are doing it. Hey, other important parts of our society, other centers of influence, such as senior centers delivering on topics of interest, faith-based organizations uh, offering their services online. We have a population that is increasingly comfortable in delivering or receiving the information in the manner that is best for them. So we want to be able to accommodate that. And that's all part of our prep and plan for the coming year. Now, as I mentioned, since we're just a couple of days short of half the way through 2022, means we, or 2021, so we still have half the year to go, we want to make certain that a lot of the activity we're doing now helps, helps us set up for what we're about to encounter. And some of the important things we got to do are very basic, no brain surgery here in, in, involved, if you set your goals at the beginning of the year, this is a very pivotal time to go through and basically set some expectations moving forward based a degree upon what we've seen through the initial six months and what we can anticipate moving forward. A lot of this will depend upon the carriers in our chosen markets and how we're able to approach part of that. Uh, some of that goal setting might be a particular way of getting additional assistance from some of our carrier partners as well. So breaking out a general goal and then some specifics for some of our carrier partners can be a big help because, hey, they have a wallet that in many cases they're able to open up and help us with some of our activity. We here at Premier uh, can help as well. So it's all part of that goal process. And a lot of the carriers will ask for a bit of a plan moving forward to engage in any co-op or additional support. So we wanna make certain that we have that set and determine some of the things that help us determine those goals. What are you looking to do over the next time period? Are you motivated by money or is the intrinsic reward the internal satisfaction you get from helping people, a big motivator that might uh, kind of influence some of the different product that we have out there, and then lay it out for the rest of the year. What we wanna see next year, depending upon how long you've been in the business, what are three and five years down the road? You know, some basic goal setting that's there, and we wanna make certain that we're doing a smart goal. You hear that a lot, um, where you're, doing a realistic goal and a stretch goal, and that helps motivate us throughout the uh, year. There are different things that come into play as well. For folks that have been around a while, the renewals really help a lot of the basic needs that we have, the monies we need to pay our bills, 
satisfy our family, all the different pieces that come into play. And then, of course, as you see the opportunity in your market, how much can you expect to make and how much would you like to make? Because these all have a bearing as to the, the goal setting numbers. And we want to make certain that that's in play. So once we have the goals, we want to plan for the route we're going to take in order to satisfy that requirement that we're placing on ourselves. Because it's like the old C.S. Lewis, Alice in Wonderland book, you know, when she falls in the hole and sees the Cheshire cat and asks him, uh, can you tell me, please, where I ought to go from here? Cat says, that depends a great deal on where you want to go. Ella says, I don't much care. And the cat responds, then it doesn't matter which way you go as long as you get somewhere. And you can do that if you want to walk long enough, work hard enough, whatever it happens to be. When you know the direction you're looking to take, that helps in the goal setting as well. And our primary goal, a lot of times right now, is getting in front of buyers. That may include folks that are in our book of business. Of course, we want to make certain that we retain the people that we've worked with in the past, but we also want to make certain that we are bringing in new blood, uh, refreshing our group. Um, some of the large insurance carriers out there have to plan for uh, a larger goal that really isn't reflected in their overall growth because some of them have to deal with the folks that are taking a celestial discharge. Let's face it, in the Medicare market, we're reaching the end of a life expectancy and some of our book will pass away. So we want to make certain that we not only keep our book in play, but we grow it as well. And that gives us then the opportunity to look at the different programs that are out there, the area in which we're choose, choosing the market, and how we're influencing people to visit with us about our skill set to help them with the programs that are out there. And that then entails product choices and beyond product choices, carrier choices as to what product that's out there. So if we're looking at the Medicare population overall, we're looking at folks with different uh, monetary ability, shall we put it that way, where Medicare Advantage or even a DSNIP program in the lower end of the Income and asset scale is most appropriate. And then when you get into the folks that are better off, we want to make certain that we have the Medicare supplements and PDP programs to satisfy the needs there. We're going to run across people that are looking for help in other areas, and that's where some of the ancillary benefits come in play as well. You have a whole bunch of carriers today, June 29th, laying out the ability to go in and certify. Some of them have already been out there for a week or so. Uh, the different AHIP programs have been out there for even a little while longer. So we want to make certain that we're satisfying some of the regulations that come into play and become fully certified for all these programs that we want to offer. Now, it's important we realize, of course, that that's an annual requirement. Some people find it a little bit onerous. For some people, they take it as a way to review some of the programs and the competition and making certain that we have a firm grasp of what's going on in our chosen target market. Because think about it, if you're going to sit there and wait for the phone to ring, well, you're going to the problem without a date if you go at all. You can be like uh, some people are saying it's politically impressed, but, uh, uh, politically incorrect. Pepe Le Pew chasing Penelope the cat. It's uh, you don't get kissed if you don't ask. So let's make certain that we do that. One of the things that we want to offer is a little bit of inspiration from chairman of the board of uh, HGGC, which is a uh, partner with Integrity Marketing that speaks to the opportunity and to a degree, the obligations that we have as agents serving the population. So that's a live link. You'll have that. It is a minute and a half well spent. Um, I have a nephew that is a big Joe Montana fan. Sorry, Steve. He didn't care much for Mr. Young. I've always been a Steve Young fan. Having met him, it, it's a, a straight up fella that really gives us some good advice. So 
if we've established a goal and we're looking at things based on dollars, work it backwards. What's the income you want to earn during AEP and the period working up to it? And then 2022 in its entirety, use some conservative numbers on the commissions because we, of course, are always in tune with being pleasantly surprised and we work it backwards. What does it take to make that number uh, with commissions? What does it take for sales to generate that commission level? And then determine how we're going to reach that number by the number of people that we visit with. And where are those folks going to come from? And keep in mind, some of these will change as uh, time goes on because we become more skilled in different areas. Our close rate will go up depending upon the time of the year. If you're using uh, conventional mailers, the return may vary. And then some of the other activity that we're using to generate leads through community activities or some of the other programs that we offer as part of our commitment to our agents. So you're looking at different things that can come into play that can affect immediate production. Unless you guys are guys and gals are independently wealthy, you're gonna have to deal with, boy, I need to make money now. In addition to my renewals, how can I positively affect AEP and then look forward? And in each of the categories that you are using to procure these leads, how effective are they? Because that does change over time. We've seen a large number of people that are really, really looking to get out of the house. So we're gonna see some of the community activity there as well. We got some folks that are saying, no, I like being at home. Don't need to deal with that. We have to be able to approach them perhaps electronically. And in each of those areas, what's your return of investment? on those lead activities. Because if we've established a budget as to what we're looking to do, some of these different categories are gonna cost us different things to get in front of folks. And then some of them are gonna be better than others when it comes to retaining them. We have to look at what is our cost of obtaining the leads that we're visiting and how much does that lead source affect long-term additions to our book of business because that can vary as well <clears throat> so if you're offering a portfolio of products and you set yourself a goal as to the dollars that you'd like to see in a particular month look at the different programs that you're going to offer i'm picking on these particularly except for the life insurance because these can all be presented in a singular appointment they're listed on the scope of appointment, one of the compliance requirements we have to satisfy. And working at the spread of these different products, well, it's gonna tell you what it's gonna to take to get in there. Some of it may be based on the history of what you're doing now. For newer folks, this may be a moot choice because you don't know yet. You also have some different categories in there that may come into play as well long and short-term care programs, in addition to uh, standard life insurance, final expense programs. There's some great programs out there that can help with that as well. And depending upon the prospect mix that you have, some may be more appropriate than others, as we mentioned before. So this is a way you can look at some of your activity based on historical data, if so, or projections thereafter. It gives us the overall sense of what it's going to take to get where we want to go so break it down even further what do i need to do day to day week to week to get to that number what do i need after a certain time period and then go back and see how well these different areas are uh, performing for us and how we then may adjust some of these numbers in here if you are Looking at some of the lower end of income based uh, prospects, you're going to see perhaps a bump here. Or if you're having some luck with some of the higher income beneficiaries, you may see additional Medicare supplements come in the mix. Keep in mind, initially, we talked about how those folks 
first coming into Medicare are making choices, some of that as agents, well, that's affected by who we're reaching out to and how we can then um, manipulate those numbers to make them a standard guideline, a guidepost for us to follow based on short-term and longer-term goals. As I mentioned before, too, you're seeing how some of these numbers will be skewed in a manner of speaking about some of your selling skills. What's your closing ratio? That gives you an idea as to how many appointments you need to get the numbers that you need. You know, so you see some different percentages in there and how tightly you limit your marketing campaigns can really make a difference here as well. If you're doing some general casting of the net and you're getting some pretty good returns, but you're not getting sales out of it, well, perhaps we need to tighten some of that detail so some of our activity where we're devoting our most valuable asset, our time, we're getting a higher close out of it as, out of it as well. So if we're looking on the conservative side, once again, and we're assuming we're gonna close half of them, keep in mind most of you um, probably are much higher than that, um, but that's gonna affect your appointments per the month, how it's gonna affect your appointments throughout the week, and are you gonna work weekends? What do you consider your week? And look at some of the time that's involved in those appointments. We see some great numbers of folks from folks that are very much engaged in electronic sales because it eliminates some of the windshield time from visit to visit. You of course have to have people that are willing to take the information and respond to it electronically as well. So how you are visiting with folks will also affect some of these numbers because hey, there's only so many hours in the day, so many hours in the week, and the time that we're spending on some of these appointments can make a difference. And what we're seeing, of course, and depending upon the product type, some appointments are longer than others. And if you're speaking to multiple health uh, product during a singular appointment, you're going into some of the ancillary sales, well, that appointment's gonna run a little longer too, but you're also possibly getting a whole lot more apps out of it that way as well. So some of the things we wanna make certain that we do is of course, modify and track our plan. And that will include some daily activity trackers, uh, the time that you've got scheduled for smile and dial uh, for some of the product that allows that, um, some of the things that you're setting aside to plan on a weekly basis based on some of the data that you have in play. It doesn't have to be big and bald, just keeping abreast of how you are performing and the marketing plan that you have in place is performing and how that's working into the time that we have. That, of course, is something you got to have a little bit of time to make it work, to let it work, but also be aware of the fact that you got to manipulate some of the activity based on what's most successful for you. So mapping it out. Um, I work the Dallas-Fort Worth area as a producing agent. And even though some of the distance between appointments wasn't really a great distance in mileage, depending upon where you're coming from and to, you had the traffic that became involved. So you had to plan for some of that as well as to the time that is involved in the different appointments. So you gotta spread it out, make certain that it works. You're gonna have some no-shows of course, um, but that gives you an, uh, an opportunity to do some in-field follow-up and marketing and making certain that we have the different programs that are out there uh, in the community, if we're active uh, on a face-to-face -face type of basis, that we are working to make all of those successful as well. The challenge with a whole bunch of this stuff is even when you write it down, statistics have shown that writing down your goals creates an opportunity for you to be even more successful in what you're doing because part of it, you're holding yourself accountable. You're doing the different pieces that come into play and you have people that you answer to. Sometimes it might be the carrier partners that have given you some help. They're looking for certain production numbers. They're gonna look to hold you accountable. Um, if you have a business partner, or a personal partner, they're gonna probably hold you 
accountable as well. And then, of course, the big entity in here is you. Are you holding yourself accountable? And are you looking at the different components that are going to make you successful or those that are going to pull you down a little bit? So once again, that flexibility on going through things. Looking at the different components as to what we have to do in order to be successful day to day is how are we best using our time? And as salespeople, obviously, the component that really pulls in directly countable numbers is sales. But in order to get there, you've got to do the prospecting. You got to deal with the folks that don't give you an opportunity to visit with them, no shows, uh, the travel time that's involved, the paperwork with some of the different pieces that come into play. A lot of that is condensed by using electronic means of app submission and a bunch of different programs that are out there that can help you there. And then how, once again, as we look at the schedule that we set for ourselves, how are we making certain that we are um, doing what we need to do, plain and simple? Because much is where today's presentation is being recorded and being sent out to you for review. I review it too. I want to make certain that we cover things as timely as possible and we can make it work. That is an influencer on future activity. And then, of course, on the follow up piece of it as well. So it's whatever you're doing, it's, it's a measurable effort and it is a piece that will help you uh, plan future activity. So I hope that answers your question there, too, Jacob, of uh, what are we going to do as to are we going to send out this presentation? Yeah, because we want you to have access to it directly. You can, of course, then access it on our website and YouTube. But some of the things that you're doing in the field kind of mirror that to a degree in, okay, I set an appointment, I ran the appointment, we enrolled the individual, we submitted the applications uh, electronically, uh, the vast majority of them are going in that way now, and we did some follow-up to make certain that the folks are comfortable with their choice, they don't have buyer's remorse, they're able to do some of the things that come into play, because let's face it, there's some folks that are going to be a little hinky on some different things. We want to make certain our presentation is not only compliant and thorough, but it's understandable and the folks are comfortable with the choice that you help them make. And we want to make certain that that is done for you. So some of the different things we recommend to start out with, of course, is right now, certify for the carriers you're contracted with. Be prepared with what they're offering. They are going to be rolling out a whole bunch of face-to-face -face and virtual activity moving forward as well. And that's important for us to participate in, even if we've had a contract with a carrier for years, because, you know, we see these programs change year over year, some a great deal. We want to make certain that we, some not at all, uh, we want to make certain too that some of the other differences come into play, because it's not just a dollar difference on a copay here or uh, a whatever it is for a hospital admission, the number of days. We've got to make certain that. The other components of a knowledgeable, informed decision are there for us. So making certain that we know how to address provider questions, the ancillary benefits that come with many of the MA programs, the difference in premium on the med sub plans and the plan types, and the explanation that we have there. But some of the folks that you know, you may already have become involved with Walmart for this year because there's a couple of rounds that have already gone through. Many of the stores are spoken for, but we're seeing carrier retailers, carrier retailer efforts that haven't even fully been announced yet. And so if you are a partner of a carrier that's a player in your market, being ingrained in the psyche of the agent manager in your area will help you make certain that you're able to participate in any of the marketing activity that they come in the play, that comes into play. So we want to make certain that we have that retail training taken care of if we're involved in it and the websites that are part and parcel of the participation in that. We have, of course, 
additional trainings out there that help you be successful in that space. So if you've established a center of influence in the community as a focal point for your activity, we want to make certain that we are bringing in all the surrounding area folks that can become very much a key factor in your success with that. And that is on a live or a virtual basis because many of the different information programs that are out there can be very, very helpful for you in either fashion in the delivery of the information. And regardless if, if you're offering MA or MedSup programs uh, dealing with drug benefits, do we have the basic information we need for the low income subsidy extra help programs that can help them with medication cost or the Medicare savings programs? Remember we talked about acronyms earlier that can help them with some of the base medical and may qualify them for an entirely different program. So are we up on that information? Do we have those resources available that we can speak knowledgeably on that? Because if you don't, the agent that follows you in that household, and they will, they may boot you out even though you made a great carrier choice, but you didn't talk about how some of these programs, if they qualify for them, can really alter the choice that they have made. There are also the different electronic tools out there that we need to come into play with. So the MedSup Quote Engine, our Medicare Center program, becoming accustomed to the Medicare.gov program, and making certain that we're conscious of how we can spread the value of a single lead through multiple selling opportunities through that old basic of referrals. One of the things you'll get as part of the follow-up is a short video on working referrals effectively. And we think that can really drive down the acquisition cost of your uh, new members and making certain that you work your book or folks that you've served that are giving you information on additional people to speak with. Because some of the stuff, well, AHIP's been out there for a while. A lot of the carriers will uh, require this. There are a number of them that allow you to use this to bypass some of the modules that they have. Having that done the first time is gonna take obviously a bit longer. Renewals of that certification are about half the time. So this is a very valid way of making certain that you complete your basic certifications. And then of course, on our website, we have that information for our contracted agents that access the agent portal and check out those certifications. And as 2022 product information becomes available, that will be uh, available to contracted agents behind the wall behind the curtain in the Wizard of Oz, so to speak. And we wanna make certain that you have that information as soon as possible, and then use some of the other resources we offer to help you plan, once again, fill in the basic skeleton of the program that you're working on now, plans moving forward, that's highly influenced by the products that are available in your chosen market. And hey, Medicare offers some additional training in that area as well. If you aren't familiar with the Medicare Learning Network, I strongly recommend that you go in and register for that. It's a governmental website. You'll see that the link says cms.gov. Um, it has different web-based training, but in there they also have presentations that we borrow from, some we create, some of the other things that are out there that allow you to use that as a presentation, be it live or virtually. And once again, having that translator guide can be invaluable for you in making certain that we're all on the same page as to what SEP means. You know, some basics there, but it's a great way for us to make certain that we're properly translating the uh, information that we're giving out. I'm going to pause here very briefly to make certain that we cover any questions that will come that uh, have come to us at this point in time. The first one is, of course, yes, the, the presentation is being recorded and will be sent to everyone available on our website and on the YouTube channel. Uh, what do you think is the max number of appointments, presentations a new agent can do while doing all of that marketing too, assuming a face-to-face -face start? 
that's a big factor, Brian, as to are you doing the presentations face to face? How comfortable are you if it's not a one call close of do I have to visit them again? Have to. Boy, that's terrible. Um, or can I handle that electronically through some of the tools we'll discuss in a little bit? Because that will influence the number of presentations you're able to do on a face-to-face -face basis to start. Because you're going to factor in the travel time. You're going to factor in the availability of uh, presentations throughout the day. Some folks that are retired still get up at 5 a.m. And they're willing to see you earlier in the day, 5 o'clock. Even a crazy guy like me never did a 5 o'clock. I did do a 6 once twice um, and then some folks that are going they're more of the owls they go later in the day so depending upon where some of your leads drive you that's going to affect the number of presentations that you come into play i generally when you're doing a medicare advantage presentation i usually set aside 50 to 60 minutes for the presentation itself and then about a half an hour of travel time in between so depending upon when your day starts and when it ends, well, how much can you do? Slot out on your calendar, let's say a start at 8.30 or 9. And the uh, things that come into play then for the rest of your day. There are some folks, they don't want to talk to you at lunch. There are some folks that say, hey, can we have lunch? You got to be careful on what you feed them if you're going to do that. Um, but that will be part of it. Kimberly, I hope that helps with this. I'm going to send uh, this out to you as well. And there's a neat little presentation we do to help you access some additional information we're going to see from the government um, through CMS that give us the um, additional ways of obtaining marketing material free from the government. Ain't that a shocker? And that's this program where you're going in and registering at this website. It's going to give you access to material the government puts out there. And strangely enough, that includes giveaways to a degree. You can get each month 50 calendars through this site if they're still in stock. They come in and out of stock occasionally. But that's something that even though we're into July, folks love to have a calendar, and particularly in our age demographics that we normally see in the Medicare population. You know, it's like not everybody's on a smartphone with a calendar. Some of the folks that are disabled may or may not be more into that way of tracking their day and the obligations they have through the week. Um, but some folks, hey, I'm still writing it on a calendar. I'm consulting that. It's tacked to the refrigerator, whatever it is. This is a great way of going through that. And I've got a piece as a follow-up as to what you can expect and how to order through this that will come to you as well. Because I'm already 45 minutes in, I'm talking too much, too long. It gives you also access to different carrier information. This is a sample from United Healthcare. Humana has some great material. Anthem has some great material. I'm going to go through and not name carriers that are offering great material, but they're out there. And as you become accustomed to some of the programs that are out there, like the Agent Toolkit for United Healthcare, the folks that access the information on that and use it are leaps and bounds more successful over the folks that aren't. And their Medicare Made Clear program gives you access to free material that can help you in their presentations. And many of it is not only available in multiple languages, but personalized with your name and contact information. So as I mentioned earlier, carrier benefits will be behind the wall. But this is a program we offer without cost to our contracted agents where you have a universal login from any type of device, basically. It gives you access to three different quoting engines and a CRM, a customer uh, base program where you can track your clients and, and prospects and give you a repository for that mandatory scope of appointment, which is available to obtain in multiple fashions, email and text and voice for some folk. Um, but then you have the quoting engines that are powered by Connexure, Sunfire, and CSG, so you can handle the gambit of folks' needs for information depending upon what product they feel is best for them. And so we're able then to also text to enroll, we're able to send out a side-by-side -side comparison up to three carriers, 
And this also creates a microsite for you where you can drive people to that site. And as they enroll through your personal URL, you're going to get credit for that because that's set up and pointed to you. So you're combining live and virtual presentations and live and virtual enrollments all off of this tool. And one of the things that are available in there is a way to help you cross sell as well, because we're going to run into some folks that are basically looking for assurance that their current program is still their best choice. In some cases, it will be in certain markets that may be dominated by one carrier or another, but you're able to fill in the gaps with a hospital indemnity program or add on dental coverage based on that. So you don't necessarily have to be defeated by a person that's really proud of their current coverage. You're able to expand on that with some additional programs that are out there that can satisfy a particular need. Keep in mind of all these quotes and information that's on there, the only type of programs you can't present on that initial presentation going in for a Medicare appointment is that final expense. That involves the 48-hour uh, cooling off period, unless, of course, you went in on a final expense lead and the person says, do you handle Medicare as well? Then you can whip out the scope. They're bringing it up. You don't. And you're able to handle a bunch of things on a singular appointment. So some different tools that are available to you as part of Medicare Center that can be invaluable for you, can really stretch the hours of the day. And as you send out that scope of appointment that has all those products listed on it, it's setting up an expectation for multiple product presentations. And it gives you a whole bunch of information that's out there. One of the things that we have next week is our partners at CSG. We're going through and speaking to their Medicare Edge program that will give you demographic information in different territories as to uh, the folks that are living there and the detail that you have in those market analytics that can really help you when it comes to, hey, what might be the best program for this area? Is this my strength? And make it work that way. Because you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. You got to be conscious of the fact that there's no one pill that cures all. One size doesn't fit all. And we've got to be prepared to pivot because some of these folks, you have a face-to-face -face set with them. Uh, they may change their mind, uh, give you a call saying, hey, I don't really want to do it face-to-face. -face. Can I get the information in another fashion? You can conduct a virtual meeting, pivoting to make it work. And you're going to want to incorporate in multiple programs to get in front of those people. So much as we talked about having product choice as a good indicator of how some of this works. Well, we also want to go through and look at the different ways of getting in front of individuals. So you can cold call for some Medicare product. What is that? Medicare supplement programs, all but one. Can't cold call for AERP MedSup, but you can cold call for MedSup. We have a lot of folks now that are really looking at 63 and a half to 64 year olds and marketing dental. Not a huge sale up front, more than you might realize in a lot of areas, as Confucius say, many pebbles build a great wall. But it is creating a flow of prospects turning 65 by utilizing that program. And it's effective because you see a rate increase from 64 to 65 in most dental programs. It's an incentive to do it now. Then you can look at the different activities in the community, if you're working in retail settings, if you're doing those different centers of influence out there, and we have these all set up as recorded past presentations, new ones coming through as well, so watch for that. And as you become involved with the different carriers and you develop a partnership with those folks, there's lead opportunities there too. Social media is so hot when it comes to lead generation now, uh, we have some different programs that can help you in that area. We'll talk about them briefly. Once again, that referral program, taking one lead and growing it into three, six, 12. I had one presentation a number of years ago into a little sketchy neighborhood 
where I was visiting with the lady and uh, asked her, I said, you have any friends that might be comfortable in sharing information as a group? She had 12 people in her apartment when I visited there, two more that couldn't make it that I had set up for appointments right after that meeting. So some different things you ask ahead of time, you ask during, all through the presentation and after, and it can really grow that. And then of course, the tried and true direct mail. If you're one of the individuals that aren't afraid of a relationship with Ma Bell, well, we have contact lists that are available for you at minimal or no cost, depending upon our contractual uh, partnership that we have in play. You gotta keep in mind that no matter what list you buy, people are on multiple lists. So it's even though the list you obtain may be blocked from other individuals, you got other vendors out there that are looking at some of that same information. So we need to be aware of the fact that nothing is sacrosanct for us. We need to work with the expectation that some of these folks are already contacted. But it also is important for us to realize that we can't cold call for everything. We talked about the fact that you can for med subs all but one, you can't for MA or PDP programs. You have a number of folks out there looking to help people become involved with LIS, MSP. I've got a little challenge with that sometimes, but some folks are very successful for it. If you're working that retail, we've got a number of recorded presentations that can help you, not only in choices that are still there and are developing, but also how you can make your involvement in that pay off. because. Your most valuable resource is time. Even if Walmart has tripled the cost of some of their programs, well, of their program, and they have, it's three apps for new people, new to 65. So we can make it as well. And of course, that's one of the reasons we talk about cold calling because you can cold call for dental, as you asked there, Brian. And that's a great way for people to establish your book throughout the age spectrum. We also want to make certain that as you go through and you plan your market, you're looking at the providers that are available in that area and reaching out to them. We have a program that helps you with provider marketing. That might be one of the areas you tweak as you work an area and you see that one doctor is more popular than the others, swinging by the office, introducing yourself, saying, hey, you've enrolled the people that are looking forward to utilizing them as their primary care. They may already be doing it or new people that you're moving for them and thank them for taking care of your people. That's a great way to start establishing a relationship with those providers and other partners in the area. We see carriers, MA carriers, that have marketing programs aimed at dentists. Looking at some of the other folks that are influencers in our community can be great partners as well. The churches, churchangel.com will help you lay out your target market, where are the different centers of influence are there. Church Angel works on the Christian book, but there are also uh, sites available for Muslims, Muslims, pardon me, um, Jewish people, different faiths that are out there. And we have a, shockingly, a recorded webinar that can help you there as well. Um, as I mentioned, some of the carriers may help with you. This is a quid pro quo, scratch your back, scratch mine establishing the relationship, driving business to them, that makes a huge difference. And some of them may offer fresh leads. Some of them may offer what I refer to as Lazarus leads, where some captives have beat on them for a little bit, couldn't contact them or whatever. That's a great opportunity for you moving forward. And then of course, social media, you got different programs out there that can help you in this area. And they include different things we'll talk about in just a moment. That referral program, I cannot overemphasize it because you can go back to the people that are already your clients and farm them for referrals. And as I mentioned, as you reach out to new people, working it across the board through the time spectrum of the appointment setting through the presentation, invaluable for you. Direct mail, you know, there's the old expression from Mark Twain, uh, the, the uh, my demise has been greatly exaggerated, ain't dead yet, like they say on Monty Python. This is an activity that is proven. You just have to do it consistently. And we have ways that you can afford to do so in uh, some of the support programs that we have. And once again, that cross-selling feature, 
will make a huge difference when you're looking at your overall plan. Because if you're going in and counting just your base program and not at least sowing the seeds for additional sales, well, that's going to kind of tweak that projection you had at the first of it, where you're going to have to go much heavier on the base programs and then perhaps circle back on some of the others. Different people are more comfortable doing it in different fashions. If you set your calendar up with heavy appointments, obviously that may require a second visit because you have other obligations down the road. So some of the things that we're gonna do to help you from our folks here at Premier Marketing is give you an opportunity to set up an agent profile through Surance Bay. So as you identify the different needs of your prospects and clients, you're able then to use this as a repository for your e &O, answering questions that you commonly see on contracts, and then picking carriers and filling in the blanks electronically. This entire process that we have in our world now has gone so electronic. I feel old a lot of times because I worked in the pre-MIPA area or time period as well. Everything was paper. Contracting was paper. Applications were paper. And our handwriting just plain old smells bad. And so doing things electronically really speeds up the process. We do offer discounted errors in admission for our qualified agents. And this is a program you own. So it's not like being added to a blanket E&O policy. This is a program you own and covers you regardless of who you're contracting through. We realize we're not the only fish in the sea, the only train on the track. Um, we'd like to be for you, but I don't care who you contract with. Nobody has everything of everybody. Some try to, and you kind of have some challenges with that down the road. But this will cover you regardless of your upline and how you're contracting. We also offer uh, multi-course online insurance programs for CE, continuing education, discounted through our relationship with WebCE to make certain that your license stays in play. And you have an opportunity to add to your own benefit package through a modified guarantee issue DI program, disability income for yourself, modified guarantee issue, you are being paid on a commission on a program for yourself. We got to protect our ability to earn as well. Much as where today's presentation is being recorded, you have additional recordings available, as I mentioned, on our website and on our YouTube channel that you can access 24 seven. That electronic tool with Medicare Center, I cannot overestimate the value this brings to you. It gives you that opportunity to provide information compliantly, gather all the detail that you need to stay in line with what the government says we have to do and make it simple for you. Plus, you're not charged for it. It's free for our contracted agents and any agent with a program that's contracted through an integrity marketing platform partner as well. That electronic tool that enables you to cross sell as well can make a huge difference. This is where you're gonna quote different med sucks. The other two programs are more MA and PDP based. Uh, CSG is working in that area now, but this is the tool everybody uses for MedSub. And that cross-selling, that's going to drive up our customer retention, our persistency across the board. Keep in mind, the products don't have to be with the same carrier. They have to be with the same agent, you. And that's going to drive up your persistency across the board. Different carriers in different areas as well will offer different incentive programs. MA and PDP programs, the max, maximum compensation is set by the government. Most of the carriers offer that as well. So you don't see a lot of extras when it comes to money in your pocket or spits in that area. But MedSup does, those ancillary programs do. And that can help you qualify for additional dollars, perhaps in trips, and helps you qualify for premier incentive programs as well, which... Last year was, well, you know, it's supposed to be a cruise, turned into money into the pockets. So some of the things that are out there, we talked about the custom list that's available to you, the different community-based marketing programs, the other things that come into play with carrier-generated, internet-generated uh, leads through direct mail and that referral program. Well, that direct mail program deeply discounts the cost of those mail programs. And there are two programs you could qualify for every month based on your production. One for the health programs, 
and one for final expense. We use certain vetted lead vendors in order to make certain that we're staying compliant. And I apologize, I realize we're at the top of the hour. We're really close to the end. Hang with me just a little bit longer. This is a way then that you have preset validated outreach so you don't have to worry about compliance. We also have programs that help you just access responses. Now keep in mind when you set your own campaign and do that thousand piece mailer, you're able to uh, direct some of the timing. It's not as immediate. It'll take two to three weeks to get a response on it because you're ordering, you're sending out and then the responses come back. But you're notified of those responses the day they come in. These programs, they're unworked responses uh, they're not necessarily the same day responses. And you got a couple of different programs out there and that cost will vary by area. Some areas are harder to pull out leads. You're well aware of that. Um, but then there are also different volume of leads based on some of the different choices that you have in these response programs. Great fill-in, a great way to, to help people with budgeting uh, challenges on the front end a great way for you to build up the dollars that way. We also have Facebook lead programs for final expense and Medicare that can be really helpful for you. You get more of an immediate response off of the internet, obviously, because, hey, we're all part of that microwave society and this will do it for you. How many times am I going to ask you about or tell you about referrals? I haven't asked you yet for one. So as you go through this and you see some of the programs that are out there, Think of your brethren and sistren, so to speak, I made up a word there, agents in the community that you are aware of that could profit by an association with Premier Marketing as well. We surely appreciate those referrals as well. We say all this because, hey, we want your business. We're going to earn it, um, but we also want to make certain the programs that are out there and the support for those programs, the training, the contracting process, all the things that come into play on these different programs are available to you and are as simple and as easy as possible. Because quite frankly, those folks that are doing AHIP now, realize that, hey, it ain't always that simple, is it now, John? Well, we wanna make certain that it's as painless as possible. When you look at the different things that are out there and the component components that drive your marketing program, it's a commitment on your on your part to look at the different values that are brought by the different carriers and the different plan types, incorporating them into your marketing plan. Don't wait for AEP, you got the plan in play now. As John Wayne says in the movie, The Cowboys, slap a little bacon in that biscuit, saddle up your horse, we're, just, we're burning daylight. You can do it now, get that plan in play, adjust it as you go forward, Obviously, AEP is a little more hectic in some of the uh, enrollment processes at that time, but 60% of the enrollments happen outside of AEP. Now's a great time. We saw that great list of SEPs that are available for us. Majority of people on Medicare qualify for an SEP. The question is, is it the proper route for them to take? So we wanna make certain that we're accommodating both the people we're visiting with and driving our goals as an independent insurance agent now and into the future. So all that said, watch for the follow-up that'll be sent for you. It'll include a link to the presentation, um, a PDF of the slide deck will also be included, some additional uh, information on those programs that I mentioned that are already pre-recorded and a way to access, gee, John, what do you got on the calendar moving forward? That's on the website too. So that's available for you. You can respond to that email. You can give us a call, 1-800-365-8208. If you're working with a premier marketer now, they're gonna help you with these different choices. If you're new to our organization or you don't have a premier marketer, we'll set you up with a subject matter expert that's gonna help you. And of course, you can go to the website and then request information that way as well. So all this said and done, we're a little longer than the hour. I apologize for that, get a little carried away. I wanna make certain that we check for any questions that I might have missed. Nope, we got it. So we're good. I wanna thank you for the investment of your time with us here today. It's deeply appreciated. For those of you that we already have a relationship with, 
We thank you for that relationship. We thank you for the business. For those of you that are looking to move forward with us in the future or considering us, we thank you for that consideration as well. And until we're able to visit with you here again, I want to thank you and wish you good selling. Thanks so very much, and we'll talk to you soon.